G'day YouTube and welcome back to Perfecting Pete. Today we're going to be talking about tracking macros specifically for weight loss. So we're going to cover some, some basic topics. Um, why track macros over you know, energy, so calories and kilojoules. Uh, understanding some high level basics about macronutrients, what they are, what they mean, what they're for. Uh, we're not going to do a deep dive in that, into that. that. That's a whole series of videos all by itself. Um, how I personally track macros um, for my, my diet planning. Um, how I plan my meals around those macro targets. Uh, and then I'll give you a brief update on my own fitness journey uh, towards the end. <clears throat> so if this is your first time joining me on, on uh, Perfecting Pete, um, this channel's really about um, tracking my own fitness journey while I lose weight. Um, I've lost uh, 15 kilos so far in the last three months or so, probably a little less, um, just by changing my diet and exercise. I'm currently on a program, um, but, but really this channel is not just about documenting my journey, but also um, you know, sharing with, with, the, with YouTube, um, you know, how I've gone about it, um, tracking the ups and downs. I release videos weekly, so uh, every Tuesday a video comes out, although I misrecorded yesterday, I was out of focus for the whole video, so this is a do-over. Um, this particular video will be delayed by an extra day. Um, so if you like what you see, please hit the like button, subscribe, um, get notifications when, the, when I upload, upload more videos, uh, leave me a comment, I'm replying to everything that comes up, so... Um, you know, this is really about trying to, to give back to serial procrastinators like myself who've been talking about losing weight forever but never seem to make a start, or if they do make a start, fall off the bandwagon really quickly. So let's get into it. Um, why track macros over just standard energy, so calories? Now, the reality is in order to lose weight, all you need to do is make sure that the amount of energy that you're eating through your food is less than the amount of energy that you're burning each day, you know, whether that be through exercise or primarily just staying alive. You know, your body burns energy to, to keep you being you. So why track macros? Well, um, you know, from my perspective, you know, depending on who you talk to, sorry, um, you know, somewhere between 70 and 90% of weight losses happens in the kitchen, not in the gym. So, you, you know, I don't know exactly what the percentage is, and I'm sure there's lots of arguments about it, but the reality is a good deal, you know, most of weight loss is about what you're eating, not what you're doing in terms of exercise. Um, that is important, but you know, so in order to, to ensure that you get the maximum benefits from your food and from, you know, from, from what you're eating, you need to, in, in terms of weight loss, you need to understand what it is you're eating and why you're eating it. You need a much better relationship with food. I've certainly found on my journey that, that my understanding of the food that I'm eating uh, has increased tenfold. And as a result, um, you know, I'm able to easily make better food decisions and or at least understand the consequences of, of you know, eating what it is I'm eating. Um, so that's, that's, that's number one, you know, by understanding the macronutrient content in your food rather than just pure energy content in your food, you're getting a better understanding of the food you're eating. You're getting a, a, a you know, a closer relationship with food. And that's really important if you want to lose weight. Mm. Second of all, um, understanding um, your food's contribution to your overall energy levels. So, you know, if you know roughly you need to eat around 1800 calories a day, um, you know, understanding that, you know, both carbohydrates and protein deliver to you four calories per gram of protein and four calories per gram of, of carbohydrates and also fat. So um, fat delivers nine calories per gram of fat. So understanding the breakdown and how it contributes to your overall energy levels, I feel is important, at least for you to understand. You can, you know, track macros for a while. I've been tracking them now for three months. Um, and if you decide that once you've got a much better understanding of food and you've got a better relationship with that food, maybe you can go back to just tracking overall calories and making sure that you're in a deficit uh, in order to continue to lose weight. Because you've already gained the knowledge that you need from tracking macros. Me personally, I, I, I prefer to understand exactly what the content is. Um, the last reason really that I think we should be, well, certainly for weight loss, tracking macros is important over just total calories, <clears throat> excuse me, is to give you finer control over your food and what your food's doing for you. So, you know, to, to encourage muscle development, we don't want to just lose weight. We want to lose weight in, you know, the fastest path possible whilst maintaining healthy balance. Uh, and, and healthy isn't just about increasing, you know, if, if you stop eating carbohydrates, um, you know, you will suffer the consequences. I mean, it's not a healthy way to, to lose weight. You'll probably lose weight, um, but you'll probably also end up with some, some sort of metabolic dysfunction. You know, cutting macros, any one of your macros completely out of your diet, I wouldn't recommend that for a second. But it does allow you to tweak your macros. So if you're doing a lot of muscle development, obviously muscle um, consumes more energy than fat does. So in terms of your resting metabolic rate, 
or your active metabolic rate, the more muscular you are, the more energy you're burning. Um, that means that if you're trying to trying to create that deficit, you can, you can accelerate your weight loss by creating a larger deficit by having more muscle mass to feed. It's a really hungry part of your body. So, you know, you can fine tune by understanding the macros in your food and by setting macro targets and then tracking to it, you can start to fine tune encouraging muscle development. Uh, you can also encourage fat loss hormones. So, you know, overall, that's why I believe in tracking macros, at least in order to gain that extra understanding of how food works. So I'm, I'm just going to go through some really high level basics of macronutrients, what they mean, what they are. Um, as I said at the start, you know, this is a whole video by itself. You know, we could delve into fat versus carbohydrates. Uh, I actually think I probably will do a video on that and all the myths that go around with, with low fat diets. But, you know, 10,000 foot view, there are three macronutrients that form the, the basis of, of all foods. So you have carbohydrates. That's your body's primary source of energy. That's what your body prefers to run on. Um, if you have too much uh, energy as a result of carbohydrates, you will store that as fat. So that's your body's reserve energy store. Um, you know, and, and that's through the glucogen um, process or cycle. Your second macronutrient is protein. So obviously protein is required for, for muscle tissue synthesis uh, to basically when you're exercising, you're tearing muscle, you're destroying muscle tissue, uh, and your body's encouraged to recreate that tissue, um, you know, with a higher strength, with a higher density. And in order to recreate that tissue, you need protein. Um, you need the, the rest as well, but primarily think of protein as the building blocks for your body. Uh, and finally, you've got fat. Fat is the, the third macronutrient. Now, fat's gotten a bad rap for various reasons, which we will talk about sometime in the future. Um, fat's also a secondary source of energy for your body. So if you starve yourself of carbohydrates, your body will turn to fat. Now, obviously the design there is you know, if, you, if you're not eating enough, your body will turn to your own fat reserves to start burning that fat to generate energy. However, if you selectively reduce your carbohydrate intake to a point where your body is starting to find it difficult to metabolize carbohydrates, it will also turn to fat. And that's fat both in your body and fat that you are consuming. So if you get, if you, if you went up in a low carbohydrate, high fat diet, um, you will encourage your body to switch over to running on fats rather than carbohydrates. Now, your body prefers carbohydrates, so the minute you start to reintroduce higher levels of carbs, your body will will flip out of that secondary mode. So, um, you know that that process, or the you know, um, getting your body to run on fat instead of carbohydrates, is called ketosis. Um, and the diet that surrounds it is a ketogenic diet, which we again we will talk about in the future. So. You know, in terms of fat, um, beyond it being a secondary source of energy, um, it's also vital for your existence. So it contains fat soluble vitamins. Uh, those, those are vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin K. So, you know, there's some pretty important vitamins there. They're fat soluble. They, they, you get that from, from good fats. Um, you also get your essential fatty acids. So, um, you know, if, you, if you've ever been hung over and you crave a, a fried breakfast, everyone you know, I think most people can relate to, to, you know, if you had a huge night on the Terps the night before, um, you know, you wake up in the morning and really, really what you want is some bacon and eggs, a big, big, you know, oily breakfast. What your body's actually craving is essential fatty acids. So um, your body's looking to, to uh, replenish the stores that you depleted while you were metabolizing the alcohol, usually overnight. So, you know, a bit of a tangential point, but that's why you're craving a, a greasy breakfast. You're, you're trying to replace essential fatty acids. Um, like omega-3 and omega-6. Um, you know, my personal advice, eat avocado if you want to fry up breakfast without um, without crashing your diet. Um, although if you've been drinking the night before, you probably already have. Um, but the other thing fats are required for is is brain tissue development. So, you know, your, your body needs to replenish your brain tissue. Your brain is made mostly of fat. Uh, it's also used um, a, as a, a safety barrier around your nervous system. So it's very important to your nervous system. Um, it forms, fat forms the walls of all of the cells in your body. Well, most of them. So um, you, obviously that's very essential. And finally, fat loss hormones. Um, so fat is an ex essential component of, of encouraging the development of more fat loss hormones, which clearly we want. So that's kind of the 10,000 foot view on macros. It's not, it's not a deep dive. We could go into that. We will go into that. But that's just kind of, you know, what are macros in terms of how to track them for, for weight loss? So how I track my macros, 
Um, I don't think you could get much easier. If, if you're tracking your calories, then you could just as easily be tracking your macros. Um, I use an app. I think there, there probably isn't an easier way to do that than to download an app on your phone. Um, you know, I, again, I've, I've talked about this before, but my fitness pal is probably the, the most popular, um, you know, uh, energy tracking um, app out there. I use Lose It, which is very similar. It, it has a very similar database of food. Um, but, you know, when you eat something, you punch, punch that food into your app and it keeps a food diary. That food diary will tell you both the overall content uh, in terms of uh, energy content. It will also tell you uh, the macronutrients if you pick the right elements in the database. Sometimes, you know, you might find a banana, for example. Uh, one entry for bananas in the database might just have the total kilojoules or calories. Another entry will have, you know, the full breakdown of fat, protein, and carbohydrates. So always pick that one if you're, mac if you're tracking macros. But that's, a, you know, you couldn't get much simpler than that. In terms of how I plan my meals, so I have macro targets. So this doesn't cover me for the whole day. So these aren't my macro targets for the day. I still have my mini meals, you know, to break my fast because I'm in a minute fasting. Um, I have a second mini meal half an hour later, and that's that's basically pr a, a, quite a lot of protein um, with a little bit of carbohydrates, just so I don't spike my insulin. I don't end up, you know, pigging out on food directly after I've been fasting for 16, 18 hours. Um, so I don't count those in my macro targets, but I have two main meals after that. So I have my mini meal one at four or, um, or six, depending on, you know, how big my, my eating window is for the day. Um, I'll have another mini meal half an hour later. That's pretty much the same thing. It's quite similar. Uh, and then I'll have my main dinner meal and then I'll have a dessert meal. So those are the four times I eat in my, you know, four to six hour eating window. So uh, in terms of my targets at the moment, I eat between 80 and 110 grams of protein per day. I eat between 75 and 85 grams of carbohydrates. And I eat between 35 and 40 grams of fats. So still a pretty, you know, I'm starting to cut carbs out and I will eventually add more fat in to push me closer to, to ketogenesis, which we talked about earlier. So in terms of how I plan my meals, and I think this is really important, I don't overthink it. At the very beginning, when I got into this program, I was, I was sitting there for you know, half an hour trying to plan out a meal so that it was perfectly balanced. These days, once you get an understanding of, of the typical foods that you're going to use as a basis around, you know, that you're going to build a meal around, you can kind of keep going back to them and you can tweak. So the other thing I do is I plan my main meal first. What do I want to eat? Do I want a steak? Do I want to have some, some um, dry fried chicken where I'm not using any oil? I'm just throwing it on a pan. If, I, if you have to use oil, Stick to coconut oil. It's a really good, good source of fat um, and it's good quality fat. Um, but, you know, if it, I'll pick something that I want to build a meal around. I'll build the bulk of my macro targets into that meal. And then, you know, and, and it will be based on what I feel like. And then for my dessert meal, I'll use that as my opportunity to kind of round out my targets. So if I eat a really protein heavy uh, main meal for, for dinner, uh, I'll back off the protein in my dessert meal. And that's, a, that's as simple as it gets, you know, plan out the dinner you want. You, you will start to learn after spending a bit of time at the start, figuring out, right, how, how much fat comes with the protein in, in chicken breast, for example. And you'll start to get a sense, right, if I eat 225 grams of chicken breast, I know I'm going to get this much protein, this much fat. That means I need to add these other things around it to hit my macro targets. So it almost becomes second nature once you have a good relationship with food, which brings me right back to the start. That's what I'm sorry. That's that's what I mentioned right at the start. You start to get an understanding of the content of your food. So, um, you know, a couple of example meals for, for me, really um, chicken and, and, and beef are really the two core meals. Um, now, I've written them down on my phone, so I don't have to, to try and memorize them because I will forget something at some point. Now, these are the specific quantities of what I'm eating as well as, you know, what what foods I'm eating. So uh, for my, let's start with chicken. So I have 225 grams of chicken breast. Uh, and again, it's dry fried. So it's, it's thrown on a pan on the hot plate and it's, it takes 10 minutes to cook. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'll have, and now, now the chicken is going to contain my, that will be my primary source of protein. You know, I've got to hit 80 to 110 grams of protein across two meals. So you know, really, I know the bulk of my, my um, protein is going to come from the chicken breast. Half an avocado. So again, I've got fat targets. 35 to 40 grams of fat is actually quite a lot. So my avocado is my primary source of good quality fats. Um, a cup of broccoli. Now, 
<clears throat> excuse me, broccoli doesn't ha actually have that much in it, but um, cruciferous vegetable vegetables, things like broccoli, things like um, Brussels sprouts, they're really good for you in terms of promoting fat loss. Uh, and then two cups of brown rice steamed. So, you know, that I know that that's my primary source of carbohydrates to hit my targets around carbs. Um, so that's, <clears throat> excuse me, on a plate, that's quite a balanced meal. There's not, not too much food there, but you'll, you'll never be hungry when you finish dinner. Um, you know, and I know I'm getting the bulk of my macronutrient requirements from that main meal. And then for dessert, I'll round it all out. So I have a, a specific recipe for um, a, a uh, protein shake that will give me just that little bit of extra protein. It's only one and a half scoops of or one and a half doses of protein powder. Um, to that, I'll add half a cup of almond milk, um, good quality fats there. I'll add a quarter of an avocado. So again, I'm eating more avocado. We'll come back to that in a sec. Um, half a cup of rolled oats, just to give me that little boost in carbohydrates, and a quarter of a cup of plain, sugar-free, non-fat Greek yogurt. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, and half a teaspoon of raw cacao powder, just for taste. So really, it just turns it into, you know, you add the chocolate from the raw cacao powder, you know, chocolatey flavors to vanilla um, uh, protein powder. You end up with a really nice flavored, um, flavored uh, protein shake. Now, I have noticed it's quite thick with the avocado. Now, I always thought, you I mean, the, the first time I read that, the idea of sticking avocado in a protein shake or in, in, in a beverage of any kind really turned me off. Um, but I gave it a go. And to be honest, you can't taste the avocado. Um, it's just, it does make it thicker. So I've noticed that I would never normally, and I don't think most people would, would normally add water to milk in a beverage again. But because I'm blending it and I've got so much stuff in it, I actually found that if I didn't add water to my shake, it was too thick. It was almost like I needed a spoon to, to drink it, which was, you know, it's kind of gross. So um, I add half a cup of water as well. It doesn't have any macro content in it, so I'm not worried about it. And that just makes it nice and thin. Throw three or four ice cubes in there just to, to make it cold. Bob's your uncle. So that's, that's a protein, sorry, that's a, that's a chicken meal that hits all of my macronutrient requirements um, and is a really nicely balanced meal. Now, you'll notice when I talk about the steak meal, it's a very similar meal. It has the same sorts of foods. That's because I like those foods. There's lots of replacements. You could stick, um, you know, almond butter in to replace a lot of the avocado if you're not a big fan of avocado. So, you know, if you wanted to back off the avocado in both dinner and your protein shake, then you could throw almond butter into your protein shake instead and get another good quality source of, of fats. You could maybe have some almonds, some actual almonds, um, you know, and chew on those and take them out of your shake. So again, you've got lots of lots of uh, options around playing with your macronutrients, still hitting targets, but not stressing too much about it. So in terms of a steak meal, 250 grams of sirloin steak, uh, half an avocado, quarter of a bro uh, quarter of a cup of broccoli steamed, um, and one cup of brown rice. Because I know once again I'm getting more carbohydrates out of out of the rest of the meal. I can back off the rice. Um, and then for my dessert meal. You've got one scoop of protein powder because I've already gotten most of my protein out of the steak. Um, half an avocado for fats, raw cacao powder for taste, so half a teaspoon, uh, sorry, half a tablespoon. Um, half a cup of almond milk, uh, again, good quality um, fats. One tablespoon of almond butter, again, fats, uh, and a quarter of a cup of rolled oats. So I didn't need that much carbohydrate, so I've rounded it out with the same, same method, but just a lower quantity. So there's two really simple meals. Again, I love eating them. I mean, I eat chicken most nights, but it's good to have a steak to break things up. Um, you could build that around a fish meal. Now, I, I'm allergic to seafood, so I'm allergic to some seafood, so I tend to just skip the whole seafood category. Um, but you could just as easily build meals around fish. The point is, pick something you like eating. You're more likely to stick to your diet if you're enjoying eating the food. Uh, and don't stress too much. You just kind of build a plan around your macro targets based on what you want to eat. So that's it for tracking macros for weight loss. Um, just a quick update on me. Excuse me. I have again. I, it's been a week of no exercise. Although, sorry, it is Tuesday night tonight. Usually, I'd be recording on a Monday night, um, but I, someone couldn't figure out the focus, so I've had to re-record. Um, so I haven't been doing my exercise during the week like I'd planned. However, this particular week, last last week in particular, rather, um, I've been doing plenty of exercise. Just not the sort of exercise that I prefer to do. So I helped a flatmate move out. Um, so I spent all weekend, Saturday and Sunday, I think I, I think I mentioned in the last video, I did like six or seven SUV loads of, of boxes and furniture. Um, 
Then I worked normal, you know, eight to 10 hour shifts at work during the week, Monday to Friday, came home again, load the SUV, drag the stuff across to the new house, unload, put things upstairs and, and then the same thing on the weekend again. So, so nine days straight of moving, um, you know, I've got <laughs> my muscles were fatigued, particularly my back muscles and, and biceps. So I know I got a fairly decent workout last week, even though I wasn't officially exercising the way that I, I should be. So um, this week, things are a little bit settled down. I'm back in a house alone, so kind of need to settle back into a routine. Um, I will, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll make you the promise that on Monday next week, I will start my exercise routine again. I've been talking about it for too long. Uh, life's been a bit disrupted lately with it, with, you know, people moving out. But um, next week from Monday, I will, I will start my exercise again. That's my promise to the channel. Um, so hold me to it. Um, in terms of my weight, I am still losing weight because I am still sticking to my intermittent fasting diet. So, um, you know, last Monday, I, I think, you know, if I remember correctly, and I did talk about this on the last video, my weight spiked. So I went down to 97 something, the high 97 kilo range, uh, and then spiked back up for Monday, which really sucked because that was the day I was recording. Uh, you get that. So I, last Monday, I was 98.3 kilograms. Um, Yesterday, so exactly a week later, I was 96.3 kilograms. So, uh, you know, a two kilo loss over, over all, the space of a week is, is really, really good. Maybe a little bit too fast. Well, it all balances out in the end, so I'm not too stressed about it. The trend is still about one to one and a half kilos a week. Um, and then again, this morning, I was 96.1. So I'm so close to hitting the 95 range. I'm, I'm, I can taste it. Um, the other little milestone, again, you kind of look for motivation. Um, you kind of look for motivation where you, where you can find it when you're trying to lose weight just to keep yourself going. Um, I'm now officially not obese. I am overweight. So that sounds like a horrible thing to celebrate. I'm overweight, yay. Um, but, you know, being obese, that's that's a label I really hated. So, um, you know, I finally lost enough weight for my BMI to come out, come back as overweight. Not that I really believe in BMI as, a, as an index that uh, tells me much, but and well, maybe we'll talk about that some other time. Uh, it's just nice to hit that milestone. So that's it. Uh, again, really, you know, we talked last week about um, getting started with weight loss. One of the things I mentioned is I, I tracked my macros, I tracked my energy intake. So I thought this video would be a nice way to round that out and talk about how I track it, why I track it, and what I've learned. Uh, so hopefully you've liked the video. Um, if you have, please hit the subscribe button, like the video, drop me a comment, I always reply to them. And thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next Tuesday.